for the hotspot, my friends. Our friends over at the Special Olympics Guam recently announced their 2022 softball sport event. It's the fifth year with softball having over 60 Special Olympians participating. The softball program started over seven weeks ago with athletes honing their softball skills every Saturday morning from 8.30 to 10.30 in the morning at Dedito Softball Field. The event will come on the NA Softball Jamboree tomorrow with the championship on August 6th starting at 8.30 in the morning. Joining me now live in the field is our Dave Delgado. Half a day, Double D. Thanks, Jace. I'm over here at the Sports Complex Softball and Baseball Field. Jerry Leon Guerrero, uh, Softball Event Coordinator for Special Olympics Guam. Big day tomorrow. The sport is back after two years. Yes, you know, um, Special Olympics, when we finally heard the green light from the governor that we were able to do some out, you know, outdoor sports, we decided to say, okay, let's have softball be the first event that we can host. So what we decided is that let's uh, put together a plan to have it as a summer program and announce it to the athletes. And so we, you know, we previously had a chat group with the athletes and say, okay, who's in for softball? And everybody was so excited. The parents says, okay, what will it take? What do we need to do? And we prepared our registrations, did our waivers, and uh, were able to partner up with Department of Parks and Recs to get a permit to utilize the facilities here so we can have an actually a nine week play program with practice. And then it'll culminate with a playoffs and championship game. You know, we have over about uh, 60 athletes uh, who had signed up and with a whole bunch of volunteers and new coaches and with a huge support by, again, our families and guardians and parents that come out uh, every weekend to support our event. Yeah, you see the support right now. They're uh, cutting the field. They redid some of the fencing uh, on the uh, baseball and softball fields. But what's the feedback and the support been like from the community itself? Oh, you know, uh, although we were on a, on a hiatus with our sporting events, it, we still continue to have a, a good uh, backing from our private companies out there, uh, GITC, GTA, Matson, Aztec, uh, you know, uh, Department of Parks and Recreation. We, this year we got Department of Youth Affairs, the governor's office and uh, in Adeloupe, you know, was strong in, in ensuring that we were able to proceed with our sports. You know, we get our organizations that still come out and ask, hey, you know, are you guys still going to be having some events coming up? And they said, yes, yeah, sure. And we were able to do a couple of fundraising on during the meantime to, to build our, our our funding but other than that you know we're pretty excited that we started off with softball and you know we have more uh, events that are planning on for 2023 and fundraising goes on year-round for the organization because you have several events throughout the year so if anybody out there wants to volunteer or help out in any way how can they do so they can definitely reach out to me. Um, my number is uh, or Frank Florick, and and our information is posted onto social media. We do have a website, and uh, you know it's it's pretty fairly easy to get in contact with us. You know, uh, uh, and if they want to participate and volunteer, uh, have a family member who would like to be an athlete and join one of the events, or donate their time funding or some of their uh, gear, we'd be more than happy, and you can reach out on us at on uh, social media. Well, let's get uh, Marissa Maritita in here. Uh, you've been with the program since it first started. We talked about this off camera, how the athletes relied on hitting off a tee, but now with the progression and the coaches helping out, they're able to hit off uh, the coaches pitching now. Yes, sir, absolutely. So we do have a uh, majority of our athletes are returning. They started at the beginning of this program. So being a part of it since the start, I've really got to see a lot of them progress. Um, as you did mention, we talked about there's a lot of them who they get six opportunities at bat. Um, they relied on tees for the past how many years, but this year I can proudly say that 90% of them can uh, attempt to go with the live, the live pitches. And hats off to the coaching community. You talked about how there were several coaches that wanted to give their time but didn't have any experience, so came out for the eight weeks now and uh, are helping the athletes. Yes, sir. So I have to say this is probably the best support we've ever had in the um, in the softball event with coaches from Triple J, our military personnel, um, DYA, and of course our volunteers from Kamalin Karadat. Um, we have half of them who play softball and they're very um, they're very seasoned players as well from the slow pitch and baseball. And then we have other ones who they just wanted to come out and support. And I think that's a great thing about Special Olympics. We are able to provide that. And as they come in and they get to 
to um, coach their athletes. They're learning the game as well. So it's fun. It's fun to see. Well, playoffs start tomorrow, championship game next Saturday. What time do games start tomorrow? So tomorrow games, our first games will be at 8.30. Um, will be the show time. And then, but we encourage everybody to be here about 8 o'clock. We like to just do a little welcome remarks and then we'll be separating our teams. All right, Jason, back to you in the studio. All right, thanks so much. Your guy and mine, Double D, always having the pulse of local sports. And we love here at KU and we love supporting our friends in Special Olympics Guam. All right. Speaking of amazing stories,